do know about is how your body works. Um, that's my role as a biochemist, both in clinical practice and in all of those marvellous commercial conflicts of interest that Ollie just uh, declared me had. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, having said that, uh, this talk is not editorial. It's actually brand free and brand neutral. I'm not here to pump uh, any particular place, although uh, I'm from uh, Australian Governments is picking up my wage to tonight and he's already sipped me one chocolate frog, so uh, <laughs> it's going to go away from there. <laughs> Having said all of that, um, yeah, uh, as a clinical biochemist, what my main role is, is getting into the real guts of what's happening inside your muscle tissue, inside your recovery process, in inside your training, how you recover, how you operate nutritionally, how you operate in sickness and in health, and trying to fix and or optimise all of that for you. Now, I'm in practice, uh, so I do actually see patients privately, but having said that, for the most common questions, if you have uh, an issue that Ollie can't solve on the spot, um, for heaven's sake, get Ollie to ask me. That's what I'm here for. I've known Ollie for many years. When we look at nutrition, we have to look at the whole sport and try and work out what you're trying to ask your body to do. Triathlon is a pretty demanding discipline. Uh, over three different sort of mechanical actions in the body, and on top of that, the cross training involved in getting ready for an event. Uh, off season, on season is pretty solid as well. So all of these things that I mentioned before about nutrition and uh, are you not training, are you not sleeping right, uh, are all part of the, the process that we look at. With refueling your body, from my point of view, I say that nothing beats a good square diet. And in fact, actually, there's a bit of con controversy in the media at the moment about protein supplements. Do they work? Do they not work? Should you be able to get everything from your diet? The answer in an ideal world is yes, you should. I don't know how many of you live in this ideal world. I certainly don't. Um, but with time constraints, work constraints, training constraints, dealing with picking up the kids, you name it, sometimes something has to give. And sure enough, it's usually yourself. Um, what we want you to do is be able to look at your diet as a whole, get what you can from your whole foods, and if you do need supplementation to enhance a process of recovery, then for heaven's sake, do it. Um, but do it as a last resort, remembering that the word supplementation is apt, is supplemental to your diet. So what sort of, just as a, a rule of thumb, what sort of off training are you doing and on training are you doing right now? Is it just cross training? Is it discipline training? Anyone? I've got them all stone cold now. So I'm going to actually pick a person <laughs> and terrorise you because you're dumb enough to sit in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going to throw the blame? We're now on to you. <laughs> You have used your get out of jail free card and been able to you. So let's talk about your training. So what do you do in a typical week's training? Just tell me. Um, I don't know, swing, nice, run all the time. Yeah. So mainly concentrating on the disciplines, no gym work or things like that? No, okay. Fair enough. Since you've been embarrassed and, and completely uh, nailed, um, I've got some more price for you. Uh -huh. <laughs> when you're doing your discipline training. Having said that, we're looking at what's happening here. We're doing swimming, we're doing running. Swimming in and of itself is constant immersion into whole, cold water, so we cold water impact, which certainly has an effect on our, our bodies. We actually spend a lot of caloric energy just keeping up with the temperature of the water and keeping our bodies fuel. Then we're running as well, putting stresses on joints, by the age of about 30, we're all dealing with asymptomatic grade 1 arthritis anyway. So you've got a little bit of damage in your knees, so that's part of, part of the parcel. But the whole point is, is we want to preserve our body to keep it moving. From a nutritional point of view, we need to make sure that there are decent proteins, decent carbohydrates coming in, and the importance of essential fatty acids for those joints. So whether you do it from fish, good solid fish from the, the fishmonger, or whether you do it through essential fatty acid or oil tablets, such as omega-3 tablets. It really doesn't matter. You work at what is most convenient to you. 
If you can't get good fresh fish and you're doing fish fingers, you probably should go <laughs> on to fish tablet, fish oil tablets. It's probably the better and more standard nutritional way to do it. But we can work with you through Oli to establish a dietary program if you need that. If you are having problems with supplements, one of the things that I will do later on is actually sit down and work with anyone who wants to ask a few questions, band them around, uh, and say, do you need this, do you not, what's common, what's not. The other issue I suppose to look at is the importance of fueling. You're doing all of this training, whether it be swimming, running, riding, and you're asking your body to deliver more and more in resources to fuel, damaging the muscle tissue as you do it, and then saying, hey, recover, because on Sunday we're going out for an event. <laughs> and when your muscles are sore, when you're not getting that sleep requirement, you are ending up with DOMS, what uh, Ollie was referring to before, delayed onset muscle soreness. That's the hour that happens 12 to 48 hours afterwards. That really hurts, that really sucks. <laughs> um, you can work around that with good diet, good training, even massage, self-massage, even a good old hot, cold water therapy in the shower is part of what fixes that up. With proper supplementation, we can take that away, and with proper diet, we can also take that away and give you a constant refueling aspect to your diet. And that's where the biochemistry part of nutrition comes in. We look at your fueling demand, and that's going to be done a number of ways, actually. Do it really, really scientifically and draw a blood sample from you. Then feed you up with a few amino acids and a glucose meal and a lovely, delicious, sweet tasting syrupy drink. Send you out for a workout and say, pound it for 40 minutes. And then when you're all hot and sweaty, we come back and jam another needle in your thigh, it really hurts. We draw another blood sample, put it under the microscope and see how much you burned. And this is what's done at the elite athlete league level stage. So it's a service that's actually moving down from AIS through VIS to actually private practitioners near you. Uh, and it's all done on blood scan basis. And so we can get an idea of where you're going to and from. This helps us say, do you really need this supplementation? Or do you need to look at where your diet starts to and from? So look at your fueling and your recovery. When we talk about resources being pulled out of muscle tissue recovery, it is important to look at where you actually go for your immune system as well. Now, Holly put a question out and said, um, who's getting sick a lot before? And uh, I've heard that, that's something I was going to talk about. Um, so, could I get a show of those hands again? Who's getting sick a bit through winter? Okay, anything you can, those three people, anything that you can put it down to, is it kids that have flus coming home from school? Is it just being run down? What? Sorry, that was a hand. Oh, yeah, a bit run down. Right. One of the things that's been looked at in elite training athletes, and, and make no mistake, when we say elite, everyone thinks Olympics, but in terms of training compared to people like me who are average, you are elite. You're putting your body on the line, training many times a week, and then you put your body on the line again to go out and do an event. So we look at the pattern of resources being consumed for things such as immune system, for things such as recovery. If you are unlucky enough to have surgery or crash into uh, a car on your bicycle, um, there was a Greg out there that did that. I'm another Greg that unfortunately had a car run into me and I wasn't even training for a triathlon. So uh, that was just a fun hit and run 12 months ago too. So I know exactly what that causes to your body from a very personal basis. A lot of resources are shunted off to rebuilding and the immune system. And your body tries to keep that in balance. But when you push yourself and you train, your body loses track of that balance and says, ah, oh, I have to really recover that muscle tissue. Why? Because it hurts. Why? Because I'm going to do this again tomorrow. Why? Because I've got an event on Saturday, just like last week on Saturday, and I'm going to pound my body again through three disciplines and six hours, depending on the length of the run. It's a big scientific review in 2009 um, that's going around uh, a lot of sports magazines at the moment called the Denling Review. And it looked at how the immune system suffers in sports situations. We came up against a few pretty critical protein resources, uh, mainly the amino acids arginine and glutamine, that are present in fish, that are present in lean meat, uh, that are denatured by heavy cooking, that are critically low in these people. And so, again, we can do one or two things. We can 
change your diet around to make sure these resources come through or we can supplement. And it's up to you to choose what works for you. But it's about smartening up your training as you do your nutrition. There are a lot of specific cases of health and disease that also are part of that. So if you do suffer from asthma, if you do suffer from any number of other conditions that might affect how you train, we can work in with that and help you out with a few questions there. That's what your doctor should do, but it's also what uh, a clinical biochemist should do if you engage one. And there are quite a lot of them out there. Um, does anyone actually, just for the sake of the example, does anyone actually have uh, a specific uh, problem or, or training issue, health issue that they train through to, to keep moving? I promise to give you a prize if you admit it. <laughs> <laughs> There was a person at Blue Shoot up the back that uh, was uh, absolutely bang on first uh, and, and up, and uh, I believe uh, it was just after I mentioned the word prize. So hit us, hit us with your problem. Uh, I've got poor circulation in my lower legs, and so my legs cramp a lot when I train. Right. Um, with poor circulation, there can be a lot of physical causes for that. It actually can be because of compartment syndrome from heavy impact issues. It can actually just be a physical defect that we can train around. Some people, uh, in very, very advanced cases, have what we know as clotting disorders, or substance C deficiency or sufficiency. Yep, is that, that it? Uh, so I've hit it on the mat, it took me three guesses to get it right. <laughs> Usually pretty good for me, and we haven't ever sat down for consultation. Um, if you could pay me one peppermint chocolate frog, I am... <laughs> because my other pay person has ditched me again. <laughs> anyway, having said that, um, the whole point here is if there is a clotting disorder and you are going to be active in a sport, we need to take all of this into account and we might need to look at special supplementation. In your account, I want to produce a bit of extra energy. So I'd actually use a bit of Q10 to actually provide that energy, provide that antioxidant boost. Um, you might say, can I get that in your diet? And the answer is yes, you could. The most abundant dietary source is offal. Um, I don't know how many people tucked in will serve that today. <laughs> Certainly not me. Um, but we can actually use that supplementally. Q10 thins the blood ever so slightly. Fish oils uh, will certainly keep the heart moving through thickened blood. And if worse comes worse, we might have to use a medication such as Plexane or Plavix to actually make sure things kept on going. We also need to make sure that your trainer and your situation is aware because if you came off your bike on, on any of these heavy medications, you bleed like blue blazers. Um, case in point, I think you can take this case home because this has exactly what you need. Uh, <laughs>